Welcome to Cultivating Inner Beauty, where we're all about loving our healthy selves from hair, skin, and nutrition. And that, my friend, starts from within. So if you've been rocking with me in these last couple of videos, then you know what I mean when I say that we've been learning a lot about um, our gut health as well as our hormones. And most recently, I shared my five word story. So be sure to look at those videos whenever you get a chance. Um, we're going to keep this thing going, and today I'm going to talk to you about the causes behind fibroids. Because if you or a loved one ever experienced um, fibroids, it's very unfortunate to go through. Um, yeah, I also talked about like the signs and symptoms that you may experience if you have fibroids. But now we're going to uh, go in a little bit deeper and understand how do these things occur. So with that being said, let's begin. So when it comes to our diet, there are certain foods, unfortunately, we kind of have to chill from or just having way moderation so we could avoid having inflammation. One of those things is high fat or processed meats. So think of your hamburgers. If you're a hamburger, red meat eater, then you don't want to have too much of those because that's going to promote inflammation. Your dairy products, especially the ones that's non-organic, is high in steroids and can alter your hormones. So you want to stay away from those as well. Your refined sugar, as well as your simple carbs, is what causes your insulin to spike and in turn can cause an imbalance with your hormones. You see a lot of this, of course, in your favorite uh, owls in the grocery store, like your favorite sugar cereals, your pasta that has white and rich flour um, made in it. Um, you have it in your cookies, just a lot of your favorite stuff. That's where you're gonna see those in. The last thing you wanna be mindful of when it comes to your diet are your drinks. Um, you wanna look out for your sugary drinks as well as your alcohol and caffeine consumption. Now, I know it might be hard for some of you that go to Starbucks every morning, especially before work, getting that energy boost, but you wanna be moderate for that because um, too much caffeine and alcohol can overwork your liver and cause uh, your liver um, not have a chance to get rid of those toxins. So moderate yourself with those things. The second reason why fibroids occur is having excess body weight. So if an individual is considered overweight, then more than likely the doctor is gonna recommend that they lose some weight. And this is because uh, when you're an overweight uh, person, you have an increased uh, amount of fat cells. And when you have an increased amount of fat cells, it's actually producing more estrogen and more hormonal changes throughout your body, which in turn can also um, be the reason behind those fibroids. The third leading cause for having fibroids is being vitamin D deficient. There's been several reports that stated women that had fibroids also lacked vitamin D. And vitamin D, uh, it helps build up our immunity. So when inflammation occurs in the body, um, vitamin D as well as some other vitamins can help fight against that infection that's trying to occur within the body. The next cause is birth control. Now, women take this for different reasons, but especially for the pain that you may experience when you're having your menstrual cycle. Um, having fibroids uh, with your cycle is like a different type of pain, so some people take birth control to help alleviate that pain. The thing with birth control though, it can also cause your hormones to be released, like more of your hormones to be released, which in turn can trigger estrogen um, to increase as well. And we, the whole point is not to have too much estrogen in our bodies because a lot of estrogen will cause the fibroids to thrive within the body. This leads me to estrogen dominance. So I've talked on health and what else? Talked on excess body weight, birth control, being vitamin D deficient, but um, estrogen dominance um, we do not want a lot of estrogen within our bodies because estrogen is what causes the fibers to thrive. And we've learned that our diet, what we consume, certain foods can trigger more estrogen to be released within our bodies. But it doesn't just stop with our diet. There's something called endocrine disrupting chemicals that can also neg negatively impact our health as well. And some chemicals can also trigger um, the fibroids to grow even more. Endocrine disrupting chemicals are basically these chemicals that can mimic your hormones and they can act like those hormones or they can block your actual hormones from doing its job. So they're not good. And you can find a lot of these in your plastic containers, food, cosmetics, uh, pesticides, 
even the liner of your metal food can. It's even in a lot of our hair products, especially in the black community. And your detergents, your dishwashing detergents and your clothing detergents. The last thing that may be causing fibroids to grow are genetics. So fibroids have been affecting women from generation to generation. But when you look at the statistics, mostly black women have been affected by this. And my question is why? What is it about um, like our genes that's different from other genes and like why are yeah like why are we affected more so than other races and then i saw a study that was done on the nih uh, website um they were comparing health records of people with fibroids versus people without fibroids matching dna from 1000 genome project they found that women with west african ancestry they was associated with risk for having a single fibroid versus women um, that had East African ancestry, they were at risk. They was associated to have a higher chance of having multiple fibroids. Then they also did a study with um, women that had an ancestry from Northern uh, Europe and saw that uh, they weren't at risk at all for having fibroids at all. So I just think that was interesting and I kind of want to see where that study is going to go. Um, is East African ancestry, does it have something to do with the diet? Uh, does it have something to do with the location? Um, it just creates like more questions for me. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Those are the six main causes behind having fibroids. I hope this was helpful for you. Let's continue this discussion in the comments below. If you or a loved one experienced fibroids, how did you discover it? Um, what was the main reason for how you got it? And what did you do forward? Um, in my next video, I'll talk about how to shrink them naturally. And yeah, we'll go from there. I'll talk to you later, beautiful. Bye.